Hey, welcome to part three. We're going to wrap things up here with our on our discussion on certificate authorities. Uh, still talking about DigiNotar. It was uh, attacked in 2011. Uh, claimed to be uh, from the same person who breached Komodo, which it looks like it most likely was. Uh, some investigations into it showed that he had access for just over a month and issued 531 fraudulent certificates, which, of course, uh, threw everybody into panic. Uh, the Dutch government actually went in and took over operations of the company, uh, and that company is no longer with us, uh, thus the Grim Reaper over there. Um, in, in his post, he, he posted something to Pastebin about the attack, uh, said it was in retaliation for a massacre out of the Bosnian War back in the 90s. Um, and in it, he also uh, said that he he broke into four other CAs, uh, and he named Global Sign. He never named the others. Um, and I was actually working for a company that used Global Sign certs at the time, and we weren't able to download any, any certs for, I think it was three or four days. Uh, and... Later on, the, the next week, they came out with uh, a, a description of what happened and everything. And basically, they, all they said was, was that nothing really happened. There was nothing. There was a small incident, but he wasn't able to get in and issue any certs to himself. And none of the s actual uh, certificate um, servers were breached or anything like that. Uh, that was global sign. Uh, the investigation by the Dutch government into this breach here... Um, it showed uh, several attack tools. They found uh, things like Kane and Abel on some of the servers. Um, they found a lot of custom scripts um, that were actually in English. Uh, it was very similar to the things used in the Komodo breach. Um, some of the scripts had a name in it, which was also found in the Komodo breach as well. So very likely that it was the same person. Uh, this one was obviously a much bigger scale. Uh, they didn't detect it quickly like Komodo did. Uh, and it, it cost them the business because of it. Uh, and uh, all those certs were obviously, uh, you know, revoked and, and all that stuff. So they were no longer valid. Um, and that was across all browsers. Uh, Beast is the last thing we're going to talk about. Now, this attacked the encryption itself. Um, it was based on, uh, it was a theoretical flaw in TLS. Is what this is based on. Um, uh, the that theory was uh, was formed in 2002. So this is something that's been known for a while, and this is just a proof of concept tool. Uh, this uh, slide here from Qualys uh, in 2010 shows the level of encryption that that sites support. So as you can see, uh, there's still a lot of version two out there, uh, three and TLS version one. Uh, are by far the biggest market share there. Uh, not a lot of version 1.1 1, 1 and 1.2, which seems odd, but there's not a lot of compatibility. Uh, some of the browsers have been slow to implement it. Uh, so, you know, nobody wants to, nobody, the, the issue is nobody really wants to be the leader and just go out and do it. And if it, if all the sites started supporting it and the browsers did it, I mean, it would it would take off and we would have better security, but nobody wants to take the ball and run with it. So uh, I guess we're just kind of stuck uh, slowly, very slowly uh, getting there. But uh, hopefully things will continue to move forward. Uh, Beast was released in 2011. Uh, it's JavaScript-based. And uh, it uses a sniffer, so it's sniffing the encrypted traffic, and it's uh, it's using that the uh, theoretical vulnerability, which they obviously it's not theoretical anymore. Uh, but they were able to decrypt cookies, and so they used PayPal as their example, and they were decrypting these session cookies. Uh, and originally, it was taking almost half hour to do it. They actually got it down to about ten minutes. Um, when, by the time the tool was released, so it was a fairly frightening attack. Uh, everybody kind of jumped on it and patched it and uh, took care of it pretty quickly. So it ended up, you know, it, it showed that the vulnerability was there, but it ended up not being something that was, you know, extremely, you know, bad and, and being out there for a long time. So that pretty much wraps up everything. Uh, if you're like me, I had a hard time finding a decent 
um, screen capture or screencast software. Uh, so I would recommend uh, Screencast Omatic. I was using Camtasia Studio, uh, the trial version, which ran out. So I tried a couple others, which were kind of crappy. Uh, I found this one. It's Java based out of the browser. It's free. Uh, it's extremely easy to use. So uh, for anybody else out there that's looking for anything, I would recommend this. It was uh, it was awesome. And uh, thanks to Dr. Josh for picking me as one of the first ones to go. Uh, it feels really good to have this big project out of the way. So thanks a lot. And that's it.